This on? You're hearing it from the speakers. Is that all I can hear? Okay. Just want to be sure because all I can hear is myself. Good morning and welcome on this beautiful morning. Isn't it nice out there? Um, today is the seventh Sunday of Easter or Ascension Sunday, the day that Christ finally leaves and goes to be with God. And we have a few announcements this morning. Scott, do you want to come up and make yours? Okay, and that's all set. Yes. Uh, I don't know if it's on the church website, but on the YouTube channel we have. Yep. Thank you, Scott. A um, few other announcements are in the bulletin. Um, details on the JJ visit are also in the bulletin if you want to look at it some more. Um, we did want to point out the worship schedule for the upcoming weeks because we're getting into that time of year when we transition from two services into one. Um, today is the last day for a 9 a.m. and a 10.30 service. Uh, oh, I'm looking at next week's date. I'm sorry. She didn't put in today's. Next week is the last day for two services. Thank you, Holly. Uh, for 9 a.m. and 10.30. Um, after that is the week JJ's here. Th- service is going to be at 9 to get a little bit earlier start for the day. And then starting on the 19th, Service will begin at 9.30. So there's going to be a little bit of transition in the next couple weeks. Uh, I believe that's all I have for this morning. Does anybody else have announcements we should be aware of? Then let us turn to worship this morning and begin with our call to worship. A new day has begun. Hope wins. A fresh start is granted. Today, you have the opportunity to do something new. Hope wins. Christ is entering your life in a new way. Faith wins. Come, let us worship God who is inviting us into life in a new way, a way that transcends death, a way of hope and faith. Love wins. Let us worship Christ who overcame death to give us a new life. Amen. And I ask you to rise as you feel moved and join in singing Easter People Raise Your Voices.
Our scripture reading this morning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the time or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. We give thanks for these words from Scripture. And I'm not sure why I'm crackling this morning. <laughs> Let us join our voices in, this, in singing the hymn, Thine Be the Glory.
the <clears throat> mix up there, we have one slide program, and at 10.30 we have children's time and a new member joining in between, which is what those slides were for. <laughs> um, so there was just a little confusion on getting to that point this morning. <clears throat> so, today is that seventh Sunday of Easter. We sang Easter People Raise Your Voices this morning to remind us that we have still been in Easter all this time. And we sing that last hymn about the risen Christ because we still celebrate that, not just in Easter, but every day. Sometimes people wonder why we might have Easter songs show up at other times of year. Well, hopefully it means more to you than one day. Easter is the reason that we have the faith that we do, that idea that God has the power over death. But today is also the day that we recognize the ascension of Jesus, what we heard in the scripture this morning. It's that moment when after the resurrection, he has appeared for 40 days to the disciples. And now he finally leaves them, is taken up into heaven to be with God. Ever since Easter Day, we and those early disciples were in a time to celebrate the resurrection and to be present in whatever way we can with the risen Christ. When he returned to them, he spent time with the disciples after the crucifixion. And during those 40 days, he continued to teach them. They continued to be able to ask questions, to enjoy time with Jesus as they knew him, recognizing he was something more, but they still had a person in front of them. They continued to do his ministry in his presence as he was turning it over to them. But the story today is a difference. Jesus is finally taking his leave of them, and they will not see him again in the same way. And in his very last words to the disciples before he goes off, he instructs them, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It's a simple command on the surface, but it's a much harder one to live out especially since they still seem to not fully understand what he has been telling them. In the preceding lines, just before Jesus tells them that, we see that their focus is still on what Jesus or God can do for them and what God can do for the world. They ask him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? despite all of his teaching about living in a new way, a way that welcomes others and that seeks justice, a way that removes judgment and reminds them that everyone is a sinner, no matter how pious they may seem, it appears that the disciples are still waiting for Jesus or God to do something different, something special. Missing the point that the special has already happened and now it's their job to keep that going. Despite all his encouragements to them throughout his ministry and throughout these 40 days to carry on his teachings and to encourage Israel and the world to live in a certain way, the disciples are still asking, when will God do something for us? I can almost hear the exasperation in Jesus' response when he says, it is not for you to know the time. It's just for you to live this way. Be my witnesses. Share the story. And don't worry about what God's going to do. Do not worry about when the kingdom will be restored. Just focus on that work of restoration and reconciliation that I have given to you and shown you over and over again. And then once again, he tries 
to instill in them that they will have the power to create change simply by being his witnesses. As I contemplated this passage over the last several weeks, my focus on how it fits into my life, into our world, has evolved. At first, I thought it fitting as I prepare to leave Burnt Hills to look back over all that we have done in the four years I've been here, all the things that have been set in motion as a church, as a team with Holly, everything that we have worked into. And I hope that it all continues in the years to come. I know Pastor Amy's going to do a great job with you all, but it's still, it's, I find myself wondering, will the social justice stuff stay as strong? Will the discipleship plan actually get used? All these things that we've done, how will they grow once I'm not here? And Holly's gone. I look back at our work with fondness, and I pray that things already set in motion are going to continue to grow and be a strong witness for Christ from this community, even when those of us who have been leading you have gone on and you have new folks in charge. In that way, I understand some of what's happening in this passage is Jesus is leaving the disciples and saying to them, keep up the work. But then we had the past week. The events that happened this week have also created a new way for me to look at these words. The school shooting in Texas has once again raised the issue of what can we do as a nation to change this pattern that has become all too familiar? And how can we as Christians be witnesses for Christ and stand for doing what Jesus would do in this situation? How can we as his followers be witnesses for his message, for the good news that he talked about at times when the news does not seem so good? And then that final part of this morning's passage finds the disciples staring up into the sky after Jesus has left. And I can understand that. It must have been an amazing thing to witness, to see this man who has been your teacher, your leader, someone in your life every day, actually rise from the earth and be carried away on a cloud. I'm sure I probably would have been staring after it as well. I would have been in awe. And yet the story tells us that suddenly two men in white robes stood by them and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking up towards heaven? There's work to do. Jesus is gone. He'll come back someday. But in the meantime, you have the work to do. And it seems like God was wasting no time in making sure the disciples got to work. He sent those angels down right away while they're still standing there. It, seeking to change their focus from what has just happened to what needs to be done. To me, this comes across almost like an admonishment. Why are you standing around staring into space? There's work to do. Go out and be his witnesses and change, create change, transform the world, share the good news of what we should be doing. Bring sight to the blind, freedom to the captive, heal the sick and feed the hungry. Teach others about justice, God's justice, and the message that God calls us to act on that, to speak, to lead by letting Others see us be in action, not by hiding in corners or turning our eyes away from the injustice or even by waiting around for divine intervention. That admonishment seems so powerful to me, especially in a week when once again we have seen the tragedy of violence 
this time so many young children. And yet all that some are willing to do is to send thoughts and prayers. They are unwilling to act, unwilling to perhaps make a sacrifice, but to do something that will change this pattern we've seen. Of course, prayer is important, and standing by a family in grief or families is important. But Jesus points out repeatedly that actions are more about doing, about creating change than putting on a show. So often, he talked about those in the temple, the ones who looked down on the widow because she only put in a few pennies. And yet they thought themselves righteous because they were doing something. She was the one that sacrificed. When we do a lot of big showy things, it often doesn't mean anything. To me, this passage is a call to begin acting as the body of Christ to challenge the world to transform where it's needed. It's about Jesus using his last words to tell the disciples to go and be witnesses to his life and his work, to his death and the resurrection. It's about having faith that the Spirit will come upon each of us and guide us to being witnesses to Christ's attempts to transform the world, to be peacekeepers, and to share the gospel of Christ in ways that seek to have us live as part of God's kingdom rather than an earthly kingdom. The ascension acts as a call to do. And I pray that I will continue to try and do in my life. Amen. This body does so much in ministry. I'm going to miss you all. But part of the way that we support that ministry is through our gifts of our time, our hands and the work we do, and the gifts that we give financially to help support the work of the church. And so let us hear his eyes on the sparrow as the ushers take up today's offering.
Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for all we have in our lives. We give you thanks for this community and the way it works to bring your kingdom to the world that surrounds us. We ask your blessings today on all that have been able to give, on the gifts they have given, and on all everywhere who offer to you through the use of their hands, their voices, their witness to your kingdom and to Christ's teachings. Amen. Please be seated. So we're trying a new mic. <laughs> Hopefully it makes the crackling go away. Can you hear me? Oh, there it is. Can you hear me now? All right. We come to a time of prayer and sharing our concerns for this week. Many of them are continued prayers, but we have some new ones. And I want to begin by sharing that we've heard from Karen and Paula Egan this week with news that Paula has been in hospital again. And we ask that you keep them in your prayers. We continue to pray for the victims and families of the community in Buffalo that are still reeling from what happened there just a few days ago. And yet this week we have to begin praying for the people of Texas, that small community that I probably in the Robb Elementary School where so many families have been impacted by senseless Senseless violence. So many children in that community killed or wounded for no reason. We have a prayer blanket this morning to be sent to that school. And so as we hear the prayer song in a short bit, I'll ask you to reach out your hands and pray over this with me. We continue in prayer for the Smith family at Eric's passing and share that there was a wonderful service held here on Monday. Everyone seems to be handling his death well, but still the loss of a loved one, a father, is devastating to families, and so we pray for them all. And we continue to pray for the Conklin and Zeglin families at the recent loss of Dorothy and for Vince Benassi at the recent loss of his mother, Agnes. We also to continue to ask prayers for Bill and Joyce Poli at home as Bill continues with health struggles. We pray for our friends in care facilities who are unable to be with us in person. Carol Carver and Al Predmore Patricia Ewart and Jane Coffey, June Parch and Norma Oaks and Betty Speck. And we continue to ask prayers for Paul Sweet, the pastor at Christ Church in Troy. He's someone that Holly and I both know personally, and he's part of our pastor's group. Um, he was seriously injured in a recent accident while helping to restore one of the camps. He's doing well in his recovery, but it's going to be a very long road ahead. So let us take a moment as we hear the prayer song to keep these names in our hearts as well as lift up those that we hold most dear. And if you'd like, take an opportunity to pray for this blanket that's going to go to the Robb Elementary School.
Loving God, we lift up today all those that we have named, so many in need of prayer for healing, prayer for recovery, prayer of support and fellowship that they may not feel alone. We have prayed this morning over this blanket. Our prayer ministry here, our blanket ministry, is a wonderful one, and often the blankets bring real warmth and comfort to those who receive them. Today we realize that this blanket is too small to physically cover so many families. So much that we say or do will be as inadequate as this blanket is to keep them all warm, and yet still we do it. Still we reach out to you because we know that beyond our earthly ways, you have the power to cover every hurting family. You have the power to let your spirit be with them, to bring some solace, to bring some connection to others who are suffering along with them and to so many more who want to support them. I'm sure across the nation today, every church is saying a prayer for those families. Lord, we also pray that your power and your spirit will touch those who can do something to change this situation. Let them put away partisan bickering and loyalty to whatever group may be pushing them. Let them seek Christ in their hearts. Let them listen for you to tell them what to do. We have an epidemic in this nation of too many guns in the world. And we get stuck on the argument of whether we should be allowed to have them or not, and they miss the point that we literally have more guns in homes than people in this nation. And with such easy accessibility, so many have found themselves in danger in recent years. Help us to find ways to keep people safe. Help us to find ways to be who Jesus wants us to be so that we can be his witnesses that seek to heal rather than to harm, that seek to bring peace rather than death and destruction. The answers are not simple. And Lord knows you've given us free will that we use to argue with each other all the time. but let us all be filled with the knowledge that something must change. I tire of leading prayers for innocents killed by guns, of praying for the families of those who for whatever reason have chosen to cause such pain, help us to find ways put an end to this epidemic. Lord, we ask all these things in the name of your Son who taught us how to live and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I ask you to join me now in our closing hymn this morning, Loving Spirit. May we go forth into the world seeking the light of Christ, knowing that he has gone on and ascended to be with God and yet left us with work to do. May we seek to be his witnesses sharing the story that God is there before us, that Christ has shown us the way, and that the Spirit can fill us and go along with us each and every day. Amen.